All Here right. they are. Yeah. It is game one, round one of the European Championship. This is uh, the start of a long marathon. Our players have a huge weekend ahead of themselves. So uh, we'll see how the fatigue, the mental game uh, comes into play over the course of this entire event. But fresh start, bright and early for these players here. Benoit versus Lav. Blackwing versus Rika. All right, so I think it was uh, Love who won the dice roll, I believe. No, it's no, actually, it's actually yeah. been okay. yep. Start off with a Pot of Prosperity. That's a good card you want to see turn one. Absolutely. And Love is not expecting to play against Blackwing at all. We have to <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'd assume that's uh, definitely not a matchup you'd be regularly testing at all. Uh, but regardless, that is a usually sometimes a bit of a strong strategy. You know, show up to an event yep. with a sort of underrepresented archetype to... And Expecting some breathing here, but only three cars off the top, and it's not gonna be love. It doesn't look less surprised, uh, interestingly <laughs> enough. Uh, I would expect him to read the, the card right away, but instead, uh, All right? So, we do have uh, a Sutri here. Oh, we've also opened the Samoon, yeah, wow. that's huge. Yeah, all right. So, uh, this should be the full combo here. Let's see how exactly. Benoit has adapted this. There's a couple of ways to play the Black Wing strategy. You can play it as a pure deck, which establishes, I think, generally you want to go for the Triple Assault Wing, uh, maybe the level 10 as well with the new Trap card, but you also have the ability to uh, incorporate some Raid Raptor cards, so we'll see if he's uh, doing any of that. Samoon is the Searcher of the Black yeah. Whirlwind, a card yeah. which is... Uh, OG. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a, it's an old school card here, getting you the search of any Blackwing monster from your deck with an attack less than the monster that you just normal summoned. We're going to see a lot of normal summoning in this uh, Blackwing deck as it's able to uh, perform multiples with the effect of the Samoon and the uh, No Thung. The level 6 Synchro is going to be able to uh, help with that as well. And there is the Sutri. So Sutri basically just searches any Blackwing card. Typically you want to go Chainlink 1 Sutri, Chainlink 2 Whirlwind, and that gets you uh, another uh, combo piece, we've already searched the Vata from the Simun search. So this is going to be full combo. I'm just curious to see exactly how he ends. Uh, yeah, what sets field up he's able field, to set yeah. up, yeah. Okay, so he's playing uh, the Shanga as well, which is a really good form of disruption here. You can actually just special it like any other Blackwing. Uh, and then when it's in the graveyard, I believe it banishes or activates to destroy a card your opponent controls. Yeah, exactly. You can banish it uh, to just target off his up card and destroy it. So. Pretty useful one, and obviously a tuner as well, which is nice. Shamal gets the sort of uh, upgraded version of Whirlwind from the deck here, the Black Feather Wind, which allows you to special summon back a Black Wing from the graveyard when you get the Black Winged Dragon onto the field. Typically, Black Winged Dragon is not actually the one that uh, has been historically popular, uh, but the strategy has been incorporated with the new Dartwing Blast support. All right, so the way Vata works, it's sort of this, uh, you know, kind of uh, Vayu style card that allows you to kind of, you know, Vayu lets you synchro from the grave. Well, how about synchroing from the deck, actually? <laughs> That's uh, what we're going to do here. We're going to send the Chinook and a, I think that probably should have been a Zephyros, I think we yeah, sent there. Yeah, yeah. the Zephyros. We sent the yeah. Zephyros, and now, as you mentioned, we are going yeah, so for even a Starlight Rare. Call yeah, me. beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so triggering the uh, Black Featherwind to bring back a Blackwing, mm -hmm. and that brings back Vata, and Black Featherwind is then bounced to the hand here from the Zephyros effect, and that means you can reactivate the Featherwind, and that actually allows you to use it again. It's actually not a once per turn card, following the uh, tradition of the old school Blackwing cards, not all uh, once per turn, so. And tributing off of the effect of Sutri to establish a level two uh, token. And that's gonna set you up nicely for No Thung for a third normal summon this turn, if we wanna go for that. Very good stuff here from Benoit, honestly, especially because, like, uh, Love is not into many hand traps. It's just playing some, uh, you know, yeah. boy on cars. You wouldn't expect it from mm. the Rika deck, usually. Yeah, we'll see how we can uh, break this field apart on the clap back here, but we're going to go into the uh, No Thung. It allows you to uh, activate the effect to get an extra normal summon. Burning for 800 in the process as well, so a nice little tool in time, should that ever arise. And uh, again, as mentioned, the Featherwind not once per turn allows you to bring back here uh, and also using the Shamal in the graveyard uh, to recycle the Sutri back into the hand. And just establishing these tokens as a form of counters on the Black Featherwind, uh, the Black Wing Dragon, sorry. All right. 
And uh, I think here there could be the new card being made here. It is the Baraya Storm, which is a level uh, 6 tuner, Synchro Monster. And it actually has uh, an incredible effect to dump from the graveyard, uh, from the deck, sorry. And it actually manipulates the level. And that way you're able to uh, go up further into more synchro plays. And it also allows you to synchro from the graveyard. It's like a mishmash of value yeah. as well. Yeah. It's an amazing Upgraded tool. It's also version. a tuner. So that makes it even better to just uh, keep, uh, keep pushing. And yeah, this is uh, really great stuff from Benoit. So the Whirlwind searches the Oroshi, which is just a level 1 tuner that allows you to Synchro Summon uh, just uh, by special summoning it for free, like most Black Wings. Uh, it's a level 1, which works really nicely with the Black Wing Dragon. It actually uh, helps you go into Hot Red Dragon Abyss. So you're going to end on a Negate as well here. And it looks like yeah. that's what we're doing with this Oroshi. So yeah, historically we've seen uh, the Hot Red Dragon Abyss played in numerous forms of decks. Yeah. It's uh, been particularly popular in the Dragon Link strategy, usually with a uh, Rocket Synchron and uh, a Chaos Magic Dragon, although unfortunately, very sadly, we won't be seeing him this weekend. <laughs> this makes it uh, much tougher because Love, uh, one of the few ways he had was like an evenly matched and now that's not even going to be enough uh, here. Goes for the second Black Wing Dragon here and then gets to sync that off with the manipulated level of the Baraya Storm to go into the first copy Ooh. of Assault Wing Dragon. Oh, no, is no, that a Dispater? Yeah, it's oh, a Dispater. Okay. Yeah, right, yeah. interesting line here. So we're going to make the uh, Assault Wing with the graveyard effect of the Baraya Storm while also maintaining the Dispater. There we go. Yeah, this is uh, amazing stuff again from the Benoit. So the uh, Dispater is not something I've actually seen typically played in this uh, no. variant of Blackwing, but the uh, multiple copies of the Assault Dragon here, I think this is going for the third now. <sighs> Look at that. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> just to inform you as to what the effect is of Assault Wing Dragon, uh, when your opponent activates a monster effect, they take 700 damage, which is uh, kind of similar to Masquerade, except yeah. it's uh, a little bit crazier when you have three of them on the field. So uh, 2,100 life points per monster effect. That's a, <laughs> that's a heavy tax to pay there. And with yeah. Rika, you really need to activate your monster effects. A lot effect. of monster effects, yeah. Perhaps something like a Con Con might be able to uh, get rid of them. We'll see how he uh, plays this one out here. Uh, that's an interesting... What, what is that card? He's searching off a small world. Have? Yeah, he's going for a small world. Let's see what he actually picks up. Is that a black wing card? I have no idea what that is. Interesting. Okay, all right. We'll see uh, how that plays out here. Yeah, just clarifying the levels and stuff of the uh, synchros and chinners that we've established here. And yeah, this is looking pretty strong. Don't forget as well, we've also got the trap card in the hand, which lets you basically synchro as, uh, uh, yeah, like a quick play kind of synchro. Uh, that can help you go into the level 10. Recently released as a Royal Rare for the uh, Macedo Celebration event. If you logged into that, you would have got yourself your hands on on him. Well, yeah, that's it. I think it's a decent, <laughs> decent over. Pretty strong. Yeah, yeah, that's... Wow. And now the question is, does Lav even want to reveal what he's playing uh, if he's not able to fight back? A couple of tools in the main deck here to uh, potentially deal with these uh, Assault Wings and Hot Reds. We've got the... Um, We've got the Dark Ruler no more. Yeah, that would be really good. Now, an interesting uh, sort of way to play around Dark Ruler, you can go with uh, using the Hot Red Abyss. So Dark Ruler no more says you cannot respond with monster effects. So what you could do hypothetically is activate Dark Ruler. And then because you're not responding with a monster, you can chain the trap card and then chain the Hot Red to, exactly. to negate the Dark Ruler. has been a very uh, cool little trick we've seen that people can utilize to bypass the uh, non-response nature. There is an evenly matched here, straight to the battle phase. Could there be a second copy, maybe? <laughs> uh, yeah, I found out the hard way recently that card is not once per turn. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if there is a second copy from Love. There's no. There picks is not. Up, it just okay. picks up his cards. And game one goes to Benoit with a very <sighs> intimidating turn one field. Wow. Sometimes you establish a big field like that, there is not really any options for you other than to say, all right, let's head on over to game two. Yeah, yeah. and uh, at the same time, I kind of like it that he preserved as much information as possible. Uh, evenly, it's just played by so many decks. And actually, 
arguably maybe you wouldn't even expect it in the main deck from Rika, so maybe he's gonna throw his opponent off guard there. Uh, you could make the assumption potentially that it's uh, Runic, I think generally yeah, is something that runs evenly in the main deck. I agree. And that could uh, lead to some, uh, you know, wrong side deck decisions. On the other hand, Olav uh, will be comfortable going first, uh, setting up his own uh, field of plant monsters. Uh, do you think he's, he knows what to bring in in this matchup? Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I think with plants, Honestly, you don't really care too much, right? You, yeah. you kind of do the same thing. You just establish a big combo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. But I think uh, what Love might be doing here, uh, by going first, you really want to set up your combo. And uh, I think he's going to side out the Evil Image and the Dark Lure going first. I think it doesn't make sense to have them in. Uh, he's playing an interesting card, which we haven't seen in a while, which is a very uh, long while. Spiritual Water Art Aoi. So... Yes. Maybe we will see that coming in because I can only see that going first and then also there's the gold by the gray which in general going first I think. Uh, Very good but versus good to yeah. see that there's the Aoi here. I think it's been maybe yeah. with Monarch. Uh, Absolutely. Speed and Water Art Aoi <laughs> is Tribute a card. Yeah. Water to, to look at your opponent and yeah. just discard a card I guess it's uh, it's potentially really good. We could say it's the replacement from uh, the Red Lotus which we don't <laughs> have access to anymore but uh, I mean obviously requires a different setup. On the other other end, though, uh, his opponent is going second, so maybe he's going to cut some of his cars and try to focus on generic going second cars. As you mentioned, maybe he thinks he's up against a runic. We could see some cosmics, which, to be fair, are pretty good against Rika as well. So that wouldn't be the end of the world. But regardless, uh, our duelists are pretty much done with their side decks, so we can jump right back into game two. You guys have seen Rika quite a number of times over the course of multiple YCSs in Europe here, and uh, you sh probably will be somewhat familiar with how this deck works. It is a all-in glass cannon style combo deck, and it's exactly what Lav is going to try and do here and establish a big field. We talked a little bit at the start about the Rose Whip strategy, being able to search that with any uh, with your Arrow Mage, uh, your Ar Aroma Seraphy. And this is a great start, obviously. <laughs> Unexpected die, all you need. One card combo, a normal monster. I mean, hey, if you told me a normal monster can do all of this 10 years ago, I would have called you crazy. But here we are, the Sunside Genius Loci. Plenty of ways to access this in the deck. We've seen, you know, Unexpected Die. There's the uh, uh, Painful Decision. There's uh, One for One, Small World. Lots of consistent ways to get into this. Yeah. And uh, this is the card that enables it all. Searching for the Sign Vine spell. As you can see here, this is usually where uh, some of the players use the Ash Blossom in this matchup. But obviously, when Rick. you start with, yeah. Yeah, so uh, the pure plant deck, sort of the Sun Avalon, has uh, a couple of clutch points here that you really want to try and stop your opponent on. Uh, sometimes hitting the Dry Ash with an Effect Negate is uh, okay, but usually, as you mentioned, shaving Ash Blossom for the Sewing uh, is quite strong. But even then, because of the fact that we're now incorporating Rika cards, you can actually like continue on after a sewing has been negated. Yeah, absolutely. And at the same time, when they start things off with the unexpected eye, you might just ash there, honestly. And take Sometimes the you just put them on better or have it, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. And this is what we have seen pretty much last year from Marcus as well. From this setup, you can just do a lot of different things uh, going for the jasmine uh, and uh, going and accessing your other engines is uh, also playing the one copy of longfire blossom obviously to access any of the others engines uh, alongside that naturia rose whip which we mentioned so let's see what he just wants to open up with mentioned a little bit earlier about the uh, time sort of uh, tools that's available to the Blackwing deck with a lot of burn strategies mm -hmm. and stuff, but uh, the plant deck actually goes in the opposite direction and heals yourself for uh, a couple of life points here. So should that ever be a strategy required throughout the tournament, you do have the option of using Sunvine Healer uh, to gain a couple of life points and uh, put yourself ahead in time. Although I think in this matchup, it's uh, not really going to be a bit of a time grind, I would assume. Especially because I think this is going to be a very interesting situation in which both of our players had the chance, you know, to basically showcase uh, their uh, their combo. So it uh, looks like there's no interruption from Benoit. So maybe we will be see the Rika deck uh, at full power, as we saw last year as well. 
Therion edition of Lily nice. Moria is a great way to uh, sort of insulate yourself from any sort of uh, disruption from the hand part way through the combo here as it does allow you to get the Regulus from the deck. So we send here for the Disc Coliseum. Disc Coliseum gets Regulus and then when we send off the Lily Boria, we can re-equip and establish our Omni Negate before uh, we continue for the rest and the final portion of the combos, usually uh, to try access those Rekka cards. Yeah, the Tyrion package was not played by Marcus last year, but has been recently added to the deck, to the most successful Rika players out there, and uh, I think it does give you this addition, and especially going first after siding, it's, it's really good. I'm just wondering if uh, Benoit actually has some form of disruption here, because he's been thinking uh, a little bit on a couple of these yeah. effects here, so I'm curious if uh, that'll come up. And here we see Lonefire tributing the Lily so that the Regulus in end can be activated later on. So Lonefire Blossom tributes for cost here, and I think this is basically going to be your real sort of last opportunity to get some disruption here. Otherwise, that Regulus, as we mentioned, is uh, going to be able to protect from further plays here. And I think he's fanning out his hand here. You can kind of see that Rose Whip at the front considering yeah. and weighing up the options if we go for Rose Whip or do we want to go deeper into the Rika combos? Yeah, I think Rika makes sense here. You really want to access the Con Con uh, and uh, this is where Benoit will start reading these cards. And I think one of the key factors that has brought this deck also w w one year after winning last year is uh, that players don't really know where to activate their disruptions. That's, that's, yeah. that's, that, that's the main thing. So it's not easy, basically, to activate, you know, the Ash Blossom, the Impermanence. You don't really know where, if you don't really know where to activate it, then you are in trouble, basically. And here we set up either another forward interruption with the Princess getting added to the end, which is the sneaky interruption, I want to say, because a lot of times it will just sit at the bottom of your graveyard, and it actually is able to shuffle back from the graveyard as well to just negate one more effect from your opponent. So really yeah. got to keep those in mind. I think one of the uh, sort of unfortunate situations you can find yourself in is your opponent ends on a big field and you read all the cards and you're like, okay, I got to play through this, 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 and yeah. then suddenly something activates in the grave and you're like, whoa, where did this come from? <laughs> but yeah, the uh, Princess, absolutely a uh, great form of disruption for the Rika strategy. And it looks like we're going for the uh, Sunsea Twin effect from the graveyard, allowing you to bring back the healer, uh, banishing a monster that you control with the same name as we have established two Jasmines. And the healer is going to activate the effect to heal again. And this triggers the non once per turn search of the Jasmine to access potentially Madan or Snowdrop. So, yeah, so much uh, synergy across multiple different plant decks. I mean, it's technically an, Aro an Arrow Mage card. We've got the Sun Avalon strategy, we've got some Therions, and we've got Rikas. Sort of plants just kind of establishing themselves as like a plant deck rather than like this yeah. exact strategy. It's kind of similar maybe to Pendulum, you know? It's like Pendulum is a Pendulum deck, not really a, you know, Magician or X yeah. or something. Or even the Dragon Link, you know? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Just dragons. That's my deck. All right, here's Malayas, the uh, Link Climb gets the Lokai back from the graveyard, and that's going to be able to give you a Link 4. And the Bengalancer, one of the uh, great forms of disruption this deck offers by allowing you to uh, compulsory evacuation device your opponent's monsters. All right, looks like we had Madan in the hand the whole time, or did we search that? Regardless, yeah, it did, is. Yeah. Yep, that's the, uh, this is the most important one. Uh, whenever you uh, ask a plant player the best place to stop them, it's always Madan. You actually don't have too much here, really, if you think about it. You would probably end on maybe like a Bengal Lancer and a, and yeah. a Regulus. Yeah. Uh, but now, with the Madan... Oh, okay, oh, it doesn't wow. get Con Con. No, I think he no, added no, the Con Con. He had, uh, he had, he had the Glamour. Glamour. Okay, yeah. so the Con Con's going to get the sheet, and we're just using the Glamour. Okay, exactly. in incredible hand here. Really just yeah. has yeah. everything you need. This was crazy, crazy setup. So on the new chain here, because you tribute a plant monster, you can get the Primula. And then you can also just use the uh, just basic special summon if you control the Rekka monster uh, effect of the uh, petal, sorry, the princess. And this goes our rank four, Strena. Yep. Rika Queen Strena, which we'll be able to upgrade later on. But for now, this is uh, really threatening and pretty much. Uh, did we, did yeah. we normal summon? We started with die, right? Have we not used our no, normal summon? I think he, he, I think he didn't. Yeah. Probably okay, so not. we can still potentially access Rose Whip, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, wow. wow. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, 
really, really well played by Love. Basically, so, returning the favor of game one to his opponent with an even more threatening board. Yeah, I sat through your combo, you're going to sit through mine. Exactly. Strena has been tributed, which uh, has the graveyard effect when it's tributed off, allows you to special summon from the deck a plant XE into the Hyper Harp Hypertrion. And it is a uh, negate equal to the card type of the material. Here is, uh, we can see the Rose Whip. Yep. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Wow. What a start, honestly, from Love yeah. here once again, returning the favor to Benoit. <laughs> Sometimes plants can, uh, you know, occasionally struggle with uh, disruption of spells and traps, although obviously not really in this matchup. But if you get paired up against something like a Labyrinth deck, it can be quite hard because a lot of your disruption are based on uh, monsters. You know, you get the Sheet Steel, you got the uh, Pet Princess in the Graveyard. Uh, so it's kind of one of the weaknesses of this deck, and that's why uh, the Rose Whip here is to try and aid with that, with the spell and trap protection. And as mentioned, he didn't normal summon, so he can normal the Princess and finally upgrade into Link 4. Use the Gonkon, get the Sheet, and yeah, this is... Wow. wow. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, I'm just wondering, the Hypertron should be able to get a spell material here as well, I think, when you activate Gonkon. So that's usually one of the ways that you get an extra monster type, a uh, card type. I'm not sure if he's missed out on that, but uh, regardless, we do have a monster negate, we have a bounce, we have a tribute, we have one spell and trap, we have a steal, we have a tribute for cost, we have a negate, and we yeah. have one spell and trap usage per turn. That's okay. a lot of disruptions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's really, really impressive stuff, and now uh, I guess the best way to start things off here would be, again, a Dark Ruler maybe, but it's definitely tough. So I think one of the uh, sort of cool interactions you can do here with the Regulus, notice that Regulus doesn't negate activations, it negates effects. So if your opponent activates a spell and trap card and you negate it with the Regulus, the Rose Whip is actually in effect because Rose Whip says you can only activate a spell and trap. So if you negate the activation of a spell and trap, they can use yeah. another spell and trap. But unfortunately, he has seen enough. He picks <laughs> up his cards uh, and we are adding into game three. Similar start to this game to us in game one. Uh, these guys are just uh, showing off at this point uh, their own combos, uh, and uh, it will be down to game three. Can Love stop his opponent, uh, or is Benoit just gonna assemble the same Black Queen field as in game one? Uh, we'll see. But I do see some tools in the side decks from Love, at least. Uh, first and most importantly, three copies of Nibiru. I would say that's... Uh, do you even have any way to play around that with the Blackwing deck? Uh, well, I suppose you don't really want to just drop Nibiru immediately on 5. You can sort of yeah. wait a little while, but you know because there's just so many normal summons in the deck and special summons from hand, sometimes you can play through Nibiru. And one thing as well, specifically, is there isn't really ways to set up an Omni uh, protection yeah, with Blackwing before Nibiru. So in the same way that Rika can establish Regulus at, you know, fairly early in the combo to insulate itself against hand traps, I don't think Blackwing can particularly do that. I know yeah, Chinook yeah. negates uh, monster effects, but I think Chinook only negates uh, monsters that your opponent controls. Yeah. Yeah, on the other end, uh, other options include uh, some copies of uh, some one-offs related to Trust, we could say. So he's playing a Lightning Stormer Dark Rulers as one-offs, uh, which you can search with the Trust. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's still going to be a similar one where he tries and he needs to pick up, but he has more chances. I think, uh, was he meaning Impermanence at yeah, least? Yeah, he's So now he's going to have Impermanence, Ash and Nibiru to just possibly draw into them. And if not, uh, he has, you know, Dark Ruler, Evenly, Lightning Storm to just try and fight back. So I think he is definitely in a better chance than Game 1. Yeah. But still, Benoit will be pretty happy to start things off here and try to repeat what he did in game one. Without further ado, though, this will be the last game for round one. One of these duelists will probably advance with a 1 0 record. The other one will need to fall back to a 0 1 start. But still, plenty of time for what is the day one that will see nine rounds of Swiss today, followed by two more tomorrow for a total of 11 before a top 64 cut. So, impressive stuff, but our duelists are ready. Let's jump into game three.
I think if anyone was to uh, lose the dice roll in this matchup, it's probably better for Lav to be in that situation because of just how many disruptions you mentioned that he is uh, already main decking, but then able to fall back on into yeah. the side. Totally agreed, yeah. Let's see, again, you really want to start things off similarly in as in game one, I would say, with uh, some of these Blackwing cards, uh, arguably the best. Could be the one that he started things off last round. Let's take a look at this, and it's Mold Ward instead. Okay. No Ash. So, Ooh, that's uh, rough that we hard drew the Zephros. It's actually a super yeah. important combo piece in the deck because of the Featherwind and Vata interactions. So, not ideal, but regardless, it does get you into your yeah. combo. That's Do we the search the Sim Simon? Uh, yeah, this should bridge into Simon. I still don't know what his bridge is, <laughs> oh, to be no, honest actually. with you. actually. Oh, not ah, Simon. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So he goes for Sudri. Yeah. So Simon makes it so that you have to banish another Blackwing card from your hand, which indicates maybe the other two cards in his hand just aren't Blackwings. So he has to go for the one card interaction, which is just Sutri. Uh, and just Sutri, I don't think ends on too much. Oh, but we've got okay. Whirlwind okay. as well. Okay. Okay. All right, okay. that works out. Quite wow! Double, 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 double whirlwind! Uh, <laughs> wow. Not once per turn, uh, by yeah, the way. Absolutely. We yeah. thought the star might have been, uh, you know, a lot weaker than game Ooh. one, but the impermanence at least can stop the Sudri from resolving. Still, we get two searches from Black Warwind. I don't think that Love was so convinced about this impermanence because, uh, I mean, now here Benoit gets two searches. Yeah, mm. uh, I don't. So I'm just debating in my head here if that was really the best time to impermanence because if I think if your opponent just normal Sutri, then imperm's good, but with double whirlwind, I think maybe Vata has a better choke point. Yeah, but I mean, uh, yeah, similarly to how his opponent maybe wasn't the most familiar with the Rika, that uh, I would say Blackwing is even a more niche strategy, so you can't really blame Love for improvising here and yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a reasonable uh, sort of uh, take to have on an event like this when there's such a varied, wide field of decks. If you take something like Blackwing that players are not really established with, that's kind of one of the advantages. While your deck might not be as powerful or as amazing to, uh, you know, combo with, such as you know, something a bit more established like Cash Tira or Branded, which everyone knows what they're doing against that deck. Everyone has side decks prepared for it. You know, a deck like this, you're kind of hoping that your opponent's going to make some mistakes. Yeah, and he just uh, searched for... Not Oroshi, but instead... Uh, yeah, the uh, Vata. And yeah, the Vata. The, and I think it was a Shamal. Maybe, yeah. And this is what we are going to see right here with the Vata. So I'm really curious what he sends here with the Vata. As mentioned, he began his turn with a small world on Zephros. Yeah. Yeah, kind of unfortunate because you don't really want to draw that. And uh, let's see what he goes from your oh, Double and okay. permanent. There's why. Wow. Wow, okay. Okay, now I can see why he decided to go for that impermanence before. Sutri is not a tuner, correct? So I think he should... No, I don't think so. So I think he should be able to still go into Baraya Storm or a uh, No Thung. Yeah, double hand trap here is quite rough, especially if you haven't opened specifically Samoon. The double whirlwind should help out a little bit here. We know that he's got the yep. uh, the Shanga searched as well, so we can just special summon that, do more synchro plays with that if we need to. Sometimes your deck just has like a linear kind of combo where you know like, okay, Simon plus Blackwing does this, Sutri plus Whirlwind does this, yeah. but you can end up in situations where it's like, okay, well, I can do combo three, but if my opponent has it in permanence, where do we go from here? Sometimes you gotta sort of wing it a little bit. Yeah, seems like he's gonna go for a level six synchro here. So yeah, I think it's really just debating if we go No Thung or Baraya Storm. Yeah. Baraya Storm's gonna be a tuner, and if we already have a tuner in the hand, maybe we can't do too much with that. So it could be No Thung plus the Shanga in the hand here. Yeah, it seems like No Thung uh, should be the one. Yeah. It is the No Thung, so 800 damage to his opponent 16 minutes remaining so still far away from the end of the round procedure so we're going to normal summon the shanga off of the effect of no thung and this is going to tr trigger the double whirlwind again and uh, the attack points are quite low of shanga but it does still allow you to add chinook 
the negate from your hand here. If you control Blackwing and also might go for Aroshi, I suppose, is his final search. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, a couple of options here. We can, like, climb up into a Hot Red Abyss, which is a, you know, one negate. But at the same time, you probably also want to try and make sure that Chinook is live. Let's see how he runs this one out. So this is why the uh, uh, negate of Sutri at the start was maybe a little bit rough. It meant that we didn't get to search Shamal, who then gets to the Featherwind, which would then be able to trigger here and bring back a monster. But he's going to have to go with a 9, it looks like. It is indeed going to be the Hot Red. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... Uh as you mentioned, he had to fight back against two impermanents and ended on what is a not red for now. Which at least uh, can, uh, you know. Yeah, better than nothing, honestly, after double impermanence. Uh, and I think he was on a kind of a slow start as well. So it's. Uh, One face down yeah. and it's back to love with top decks to trust, which yeah. could be amazing here. If you force out the Hot Red, you can search even the Unexpected Die, for example, as a way to combo Ooh, off. Kong Kong. Yeah. Nice one. Do you think you just have to preemptively Hot Red negate this? <laughs> it's, it's definitely a potential risk. But oh, he passed. passed. He passed? Uh, really? Wow. Wow. Really? Okay, wow. Well, I mean, play goes back to Benwall here, and wow. we're starting off with a Allure. Allure Darkness, yeah. So I was just hoping that uh, Benoit was activating their hot red. To maybe right? resolve thrusts. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that could be it. That could be it. Kaiju not necessary. Kaiju works as a great form of tributing for cost of your opponent's monsters, but also works quite neatly in this deck as a small world bridge as well. And here I think if Benoit gets the chance to even like uh, consider closing the game, I think he might just go for that. Yeah, no, for sure. Oh, we're tripping. Ooh. Tri Ooh. Ooh. Okay, okay, I can see it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes that's what you're going to go for, and uh, this allows him to search two more cars from his deck with those black wild winds, and yeah, this is cra scary. Another Vata. All right, we've lost our uh, negate of Hot Red for the Tribute Summon, but nothing on the field to really use it again, so it didn't really matter. And now we've got Sutri as well as Vata, and we can kind of just establish the whole thing again. We just need to do 8,000 damage, well, 7,200 because yeah. of the no thung burn, so pretty uh, primed here. And I think if you can get rid of the other Red Dragon, uh, you're pretty sure that uh, you can win this, yeah, this turn. Yeah, I think, so he's, uh, uh, I think he's definitely trying to close this one out here. Chinook is sent as a uh, level two, plus the four, and the Vata. That's going to add up to another Black Wing Dragon. I think the only thing maybe we might be saying if there's any chance there will be any Biro, but honestly, I doubt it. Yeah, I mean, there's an opportunity, that there's a chance that he drew it as his sixth card, which can be really rough with Nibiru, but on the clap back here, it might be relevant. Oh, okay. Ooh, okay. Actually, it does not have enough here to close out the game. Interesting, because then. Uh Begs the question why we sacrificed yeah, our hot red. That could be actually a risky line if that's the case. Well, this face down he has set must be something really important. Yeah, maybe a little bit of a miscalculation here. Hopefully, does not cost him the match. And yeah, play is back to love. Let's see if he can pick up anything relevant here. Any Rika, any plant monster would be amazing. I don't think it's too bad of a situation because uh, I think it act. It was actually correct in hindsight because now your Shanga's live and your Chinook. So you've actually sacrificed your Hot Red for two disruptions. Okay, Petal, that's a good start here. Yeah, at least this is obviously the top deck. This allows to both use the Concon right after. So as the Chinook we spoke about here allows you to negate a monster effect if you control a Black Wing monster directly from the hand. And it also uh, sends the Baraya Storm as a way to play through. And there's, and the, there's thrust. the thrust. Yeah. All right, yeah. Thrust coming from the side deck, really opening up the place. Oh, uh, that's. That's, huh. a, <laughs> that's a. Oh. Ah, uh, we control wait, the monster. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Uh, yeah, but you can't, you can't go for that. Yeah. 
Unfortunately, Ooh. cannot use an expected die here. I think it's still... Oh. It, it should be okay, right? Because I think we can maybe Glamour Tribute our own princess, our own Petal, right? Clear the field, add a card, and then use a die. Oh, can we not do Is that? Is really no? going to crash? Okay, it looks like we are just wow. crashing. Ooh. Wow, that's rough. That is rough. Yeah, this is really rough, especially considering how many of the cars from Benoit are able to deal damage uh, to his opponent. Uh, and, uh, yeah. All right, 2,800 life points here. No Assault Wing Dragon to burn, so depending on uh, oh, yeah. what the rest of the hand here is, we might be able to just combo through. But he took the damage, so now he's down to 1,200 only. And, yeah, let's see if there is anything else from Benoit. Because regardless, we are going to be in main phase two. So it's tougher to disrupt this field from the French player. Couple of ways still to uh, keep going here. We do have uh, full combo per se. And it doesn't look like Benoit has anything else in forms of disruption right now. I think I did see his face down. It was, uh, I think it was like a, a just a dead spell card. Okay. So we didn't have the Twin Shadow searched out to try and go for uh, a 10 Synchro play. And it looks like we are establishing that yeah. sewing down to 200 life points. And then wow. that's going to climb back up with the healer and the, uh, the uh, yeah, the healer here. Okay, we can recover a little bit and Time's a ticking. It's uh, we're now down to single digits. Yeah. Nine minutes remaining. We'll see if that ends up being relevant. Remember, this is main phase two. I think this is totally relevant because now you need a lot of time to combo off, and you are in main phase two. So then you pass back to your opponent, and then you need to go to another battle phase. So this is tough. And honestly, even if you are now back to 1500, uh, I'm scared uh, if you're. A fan of love, yeah. I'm just wondering if there was a better thrust search in the deck to be able to start your engine, but it seems that uh, really needed to access uh, some form of way to get to our combo since his hand didn't look like it really did anything other than disrupt. Started off quite strong with a double impermanence, but no way to capitalize on it. Yeah, it's not going to be an easy task for him, honestly, but uh, on the other side, looks like the Benoit doesn't have any response and uh, we might be seeing what we witnessed in game two but still with eight minutes left all right there is the con con effect here which allows you to tribute your opponent's monsters instead of your own for the medan special summon and that gets us further and deeper into our rica place here yep now the glamour let's see Closing down on that clock here. It's definitely, definitely going to be a close one. You can now get to both the Petal and the Princess, potentially. Let's see what he wants to search. It's going to be the Primula alongside Princess. Yeah, we saw this in the last game here. Primula being able to special itself for free when we tribute a plant monster. That's going to give us some rank 4 access. And then we can special the Princess alongside it. Love does need to uh, speed up a yeah. little bit as he does his combo yeah. here. You really don't have the means. And hopefully he remembers that he, he already used this out battle phase, <laughs> you know, because maybe that's also an issue where he forgets that he had to crash and he just tries to enter battle phase here and he's reminded that he cannot indeed. If we can uh, get to the end of our combo quick, disrupt our opponent and get to a battle phase. This deck is very good at establishing a lot of damage with things like the Sunvine Thrasher, but do need to keep going. Okay, so we are going... Uh, Sylvan Danspion. Let's see. Obviously, want to go and look for that Lovefire Blossom and any of other plant monsters that you can special summon. Yeah, this, this card's incredible. It mills three. I mean, I can think of a few other cards that mill three that yeah. are pretty cool. Uh, and this one specials directly from the deck if you hit any of your plant monsters. Just, you could just hit like two plants here. It's absolutely incredible. Here we go. Let's All see. All right, one. And, one okay. and only one. Okay. All right, good enough, I guess. Decent, decent. Uh, yeah, the, the, the only thing is, as you mentioned, less than six minutes remaining. 
Yeah, it's uh, time is moving surprisingly quick here for Love. Oh, but we oh, have okay. access to the Fyrin Lily. Not bad, not bad. Really not the time to choose the... It really doesn't yeah. matter what you <laughs> equip here. Yeah. Oh, wow. All right, Lilibori equips the special summon sent at the Disc Coliseum. Go for Regulus. That's the name of the game with the Therion plays here. Actually, tributing I think it's sending itself. itself. Yeah, I don't know what we are thinking here. We just need to resolve it, get the Regulus from deck or the Colosseum. As mentioned, obviously, Colosseum and then Regulus. Oh, no, we are actually going for a Link Summon instead. Uh, mm, okay. Interesting. Yeah, that's it. All right, going for the Malayas line here to climb into a Link Monster. Now, finally, going for the Rika Queen, it seems. I think it's the uh, Strena first here who's yep. uh, being made. Yeah, Rika Queen Strena. And. Yeah, no, this is this is so stressful <laughs> yeah, wow. to watch here. I, what uh, a way to start things off here at uh, the European World Championship qualifier. If this is round one, oh, I don't know if I can live on to get to the end. This is crazy start to the to this day one. So a dangerous part of Bengal Lancer is that while it's an extremely good uh, effect to uh, disrupt your opponent, it does cost your life points to. Uh, Use the effect here. All right, as uh, Benoit reads the cards here, Love uh, should. Uh... Oh, we're just passing here. Oh. Okay, passed. Um, yeah, I mean, he probably mm. thought he couldn't. He didn't have time to just keep comboing off, and he thought, okay, I'm gonna pass. Let's see here, because the Black Wire will require your monster to stay on field to resolve so if you were to now disrupt it they don't add anymore and mm. this would be really important from love but the card resolves getting two searches and with three and a half minutes remaining wow this is tough yeah for I think the bulgarian player two searches here is a lot to let your opponent resolve you, if you mentioned you know as you mentioned if you bounce the uh sutra here it no longer has attack points per se as it's in the hand and the whirlwinds will resolve without effect yeah. but at the same time, uh, I think we do know that Benoit searched a Vata last turn, mm -hmm. so it wouldn't really help too much to bounce because you would just be able to special summon it, the Vata, and then keep going here. We also have the Baraya Storm in the graveyard, don't forget, so we can actually synchro from the grave. There's a, there's a lot of things that Benoit can do here. Yeah, this is not stopping anytime soon. And with a 6,200 life point deficit, I don't think he's in uh, any rush to uh, uh, to try and uh, get into the battle phase ASAP here. No, absolutely, he's fine. And now we see the Princess, uh, which will actually be activated alongside tributing one of his opponent Blackwing Monsters. Yeah, so uh, I think was that... Uh, what did he choose to negate? Was it the uh, Vata and the Hands? No, I think it no, it's was the, the discarded... Yeah. The oh, the Shamal, right. Yeah, the yeah. Shamal. Okay, so negating Shamal to prevent the search of the Featherwind. But we still have the Vata. Yeah, we still got Vata, we still got Baraya Storm. And, uh, and that's exactly what we're going for, Vata. Yeah, yeah. lots of uh, damage can be dealt with here. That Bengal answer still hasn't been used. Okay. Gonna go for a Synchro right away. I don't think he used Vata's effect, right? He just no, he just, no, uh, he just uh, synchroed used it as a, as a tuner. Oh, wow. Voidogger Dragon, interesting. Nah, it's, uh, this is a card that we haven't seen in ages, honestly. I remember it maybe in the Infernity deck back oh, in the day. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Because obviously it requires you to not have any cars in the end, but wow, what a throwback. All right, here's the Baraya Storm now. And uh, this does let you go into uh, the level 10 here. Let's uh, see which one he chooses. It's the Assault yeah. Blackwing. And with 1,800 uh, life points left, uh, that's really threatening. Yeah, this love. Bengal answer just hasn't been used at all yet, yeah. which is, uh, I mean, you feel like you should have got some value out of it, but at this point, you know, you can't use it because you'll just take damage from the Assault Wing and you'll also uh, take damage from the effect itself to actually bounce. And, uh, yeah, not enough life to pay for that. 
All right, okay. Uh, is it time for the battle phase? Another neat effect of the Assault Wing yeah. Dragon that... Uh, we go to the battle phase, 40 seconds left uh, in what seems like uh, it might be the start of a really good story for Benoit winning round one here in Utrecht. With Black Wings, no doubt. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, what a feat, honestly. Yeah. What a wing. <laughs> There's the uh, Sunvine uh, Sewing used in the graveyard here. It actually allows you to protect your monster once per turn. Sometimes uh, a lot of people forget that when uh, dueling against plant decks, but it does have some form of uh, the protection from the graveyard here. And 10 seconds remain, uh, and as tank could be called any time, he picks up a card, and it's now Lav who really doesn't have time, and <laughs> picks it up. It's Benoit winning game three and round one. What a start of a day. And uh, wow. an attempt was made there to come back with the plant deck. He yeah. felt like he maybe actually could have won that with just a little bit more time. You know, I think he had a better yeah. field established. Yeah. But yeah. If we had more time on the round, see, maybe we would have been able, you know, to put some, uh, you know, more cars on the field. But uh, still, very good show from him. Rick Kadek is still here after one year, honestly. And uh, yeah, still, although it didn't win, as last time, it showed off, especially in game two, what the deck can do with just one or two cards opening. Uh, at the same time, though, the spotlight gotta go to Benoit and his Blackwing deck. Uh, you love to see it when Duel is just to bring uh, what their favorite strategy is. Uh, and Blackwing has been here, it feels like forever, as mentioned, popular in a lot of the Time Wizard tournaments that we are seeing, uh, even at the public events uh, this weekend. Uh, but 2023, us live as ever and uh, here Benoit advancing with a 1-0 record uh, yeah so impressive stuff winning round one I think is uh, particularly important with a, a sort of rogue strategy yeah as you fall into the zero one bracket you start to sort of duel against other rogue decks and generally if you prepare a rogue deck uh, you want to design it to beat the meta so if Absolutely. you have that round one win it sort of establishes you're most likely to play against meta for the rest of the day and that's when your deck is more prepared whereas if you go zero one you're not really going to be playing against too much meta. So not too bad for a laugh here with a plant deck. I think it has a good all-round matchup yeah. against everything, but I think specifically for Benoit, he really wants to play against the decks that he's prepared for. So we'll see how this uh, weekend yeah. ends up for our players here. He will uh, need, uh, regardless, uh, to adapt and keep going in what, as mentioned already, is an impressive event uh, with uh, almost 2,000 players, which means that we have 11 rounds uh, and top 64, which will be a great, great journey all along. Nine rounds today. So eight remainings, uh, and uh, we are going to find out uh, who is going to the World Championship and who will be the European champion tomorrow, which uh, honestly doesn't get much better than this. Uh, the tension is palpable already. And obviously, we're going to have round two coming up where we are going to see a lot of the contenders. But starting from round three, as mentioned, all of the national champions will join in the competition as they received two rounds buys and obviously the highlight will be their interviews and some of them on stream to see if one of them is able to even become a European champion. Regardless though, thank you guys for being with us. We have Ed with the winner, Benoit, ready for their interview. Thank you very much, Marcello. Yes, I am joined by Benoit, who's just won our round one feature match here at the EU World Championship Qualifier in Utrecht. Very exciting. First of all, congratulations. How are you feeling? Have you ever done a feature match before? Yeah, uh, no, it's my first time. So. And you won? Yeah, I'm really happy. Good stuff. So you've been playing the Blackwing deck. Tell us what it is you like about the Blackwing deck. I uh, like the, the visual of the boss monsters. I also like uh, Crow in the anime. So I'm playing the deck since uh, from Crimson Crisis, and I'm really happy to to have the support and uh, to can uh, uh, to to be able to special summon a lot of synchro monsters. Fantastic. So going through your game, you were up against Rika, Sun Avalon, Theriot. Have you ever played against that kind of deck before? Uh, yes, but it's been a while, so I started to to um, forget the effect. Because in game one, you built a massive field. You had the three Black Wing Assault Dragons. So that's a difficult position for him. But he decided to scoop, which meant you had no idea what you were playing against at that point. So when that happens, what do you do? What are you thinking? Uh, I just remove a few cards that can be used uh, 
in go first and go second, and I just add massive go se going second card. Uh, I had the feeling that it was like also a combo deck because uh, when you main deck evenly, it means that maybe she doesn't have place to put a lot of hand traps. So that's why I put cards that can be good against combo decks in going second. Fantastic. And then going into that game two, it was sort of the opposite. So build that massive, you know, the standard field. And so you just decided to scoop during that. So why did you decide to do that in game two? Uh, because he had the tulip. So I can activate just one uh, magical trap, and he had uh, the Tyrion that uh, negate the effect, but not the, ac the activation. And I had evenly match, but I was not able to. Th that was my only out, and she will negate it. So that just uh, why I decided to scoop. Well, looking at that, the the Rose Whip and Regulus combo that's really lethal in that day because yeah. you just can't use any of your spells, yeah. and so that kind of thing's really hard. But then that game three. That was right down to time, so that went pretty intensely. So you started off with two Blackwing Whirlwind, and you really managed to get some mileage out of that. But you also got impermed twice. Yeah. You know, so what are you, what's going through your head when things like that happen to uh, you? The first issue I had is that I had to banish uh, Zephyros with uh, Small World, uh, so my combo was uh, not the full power. And then when I got the two impermes. I struggled to do synchro summon, so I just uh, ended with one negate, and uh, I was like quite uh, sad. And uh, but when he declared that it was end of the turn, uh, I thought maybe yes, I can uh, do something. And uh, well, hey, at the end of it, you managed to come out the winner. So congratulations. Are there any decks that you're slightly worried about going up with while you're using the black wings throughout the rest of your Swiss rounds? Yeah, uh, labyrinth because uh, the final board is really strong against uh, monster effect, but not so much against uh, spell or trap cards. So if the opponent uh, plays full spell or full trap, it will be a hard time for me. Well, fingers crossed that you managed to avoid some of the labyrinths, but congratulations on your first feature and winning the first round here at the EU WCQ. Congrats, best of luck on all of the rounds that you've got coming up. I hope it'll all go well for you. Guys, don't go anywhere. We've got more coverage coming your way. The round two feature match is coming up soon. But first, we're going to take you on a little walk around the venue here at the EU WCQ. Don't go anywhere.